how to add or remove shots from a level sequence with C++ in Unreal. So today we're going to add a new shot track into the level sequence and then we're going to also add some shots inside that level sequence track. So let's get to it. So as usual, here we are in a completely empty header file except the four function we're going to create today. We're going to need three functions to add and remove a shot track from the level sequence and a fourth function to be able to link the shots to that shot track. And we're also going to need those two for our declaration because first the shot that we want to add inside the level sequence is going to be a U level sequence because shots inside the level sequence are also level sequences. So I'm going to need that class right here and I'm also going to need the track that I want to use which is the U movie scene cinematic shot track which is the class of the shot track in the level sequence so good now that we have everything set up we're just gonna scroll down a little bit to look at the function and the first function is going to be the get shot track from level sequence that one is going to be pretty simple because there can only be one shot track at the same time in the level sequence that's just how it works so we just have to feed it the path of the level sequence and that level sequence we just have to look for the first shot track that we find and then just return it that's as simple as that and then to add a shot track inside the level sequence that's pretty similar we just have to feed it the path of the level sequence and then that function is just going to add the shot track inside it if it's not already there and then it's just going to return the track at the end also for the function that removes the shot track from the level sequence the same thing one more time you just have to feed it the path of the level sequence and then it's just going to look for the first shot track that is inside the level sequence and then remove it if it's there that's super simple because there's only one shot track so the most complicated function that we have today is the function that links a shot to the shot track so that's the function that i have right here link shot to shot track and in that function we're going to first get the shot track that is inside the level sequence and then link some shot to that shot track so to do that we're gonna need to first have the path of the level sequence obviously because we want to know in which level sequence we want to add a shot and then we're gonna need the shot that we want to add so we have a shot right here the shots are of type u level sequence also because we're simply adding a level sequence inside another level sequence so that's just how it works and in this case i decided to make it simpler by simply feeding the pointer right away i'm not feeding the path of the level sequence i want to use just to keep it simple but you can feed the path if you want to and then you can just load it and convert it to a U level sequence and that's gonna work also but in my case I'm going to keep it simple for today and then we have the two last parameters which are the start frame and the end frame of the shot section inside the level sequence so do you want to start at the beginning of the level sequence at the end in the middle whatever you can decide so you can decide the start and the end frame of your new shot that you're going to add inside the level sequence perfect so that's it for the other file now it's time to jump in the cpp and as usual we're gonna start with the includes and we have three includes today we have obviously the level sequence and movie scene because we're going to modify both of those and then we also need the track that we want to use so the movie scene cinematic shot track so these three includes are in three different modules so the level sequence movie scene and movie scene tracks so we have to make sure that these three modules are inside the build.cs file so i'm gonna go see my build.cs file i have my movie scene track right here movie scene and i have my level sequence so good i have all the modules i need so it should compile properly and now it's time to look at the first function get shot track from level sequence so to get a shot track from the level sequence, we have to first load the level sequence because we only have a path right here. So I'm just going to load my level sequence using a static load object, feeding it the path. That's going to give me a level sequence. I'm just going to make sure that my level sequence is valid because I cannot find a shot track from a level sequence. That doesn't make sense. So I'm just going to make sure that if the level sequence is invalid, I'm just going to return right away if the level sequence is not valid because there's no shot track in a level sequence that doesn't exist. But once we know that the level sequence is valid, then we can simply look inside the level sequence, ask the movie scene to find the first shot track that is in there so doing a find track feeding in the class of the track we're interested in so the u movie scene cinematic shot track which is the class of the track obviously and that's going to return us the shot track if it's in there if it's not there it's just going to return nothing and that's good because we just want to see if the shot track is already in the level sequence or not uh, so i'm just going to say that it was a success if the shot track is valid otherwise it's not going to be a success but the most important thing is that i'm returning the shot track at the end of the function right here that way we can reuse this function inside the other function to find the shot track so we're gonna have access to the shot track right here so good now we're done with the first function it's time to go to the second one so i'm gonna scroll down a little bit and to add a shot track inside the level sequence we're gonna start by first checking if there's already a shot track inside the level sequence so we're gonna call the first function get shot track from level sequence feeding it the path of the level sequence obviously and as output is going to give us the shot track shot track that we're gonna check if it's valid because if it's valid we don't want to try to add another shot track inside the level sequence because it's already there so if it's valid i'm going to say that it was not a 
success, I cannot add a second shot track inside the level sequence, that's not how it works, but I'm also going to return the shot track right here because the shot track is valid, so why not just returning it? So I have my shot track right here, but if the shot track is not valid, it's not already inside the level sequence, then I'm just going to add it. So first step is to load the level sequence, obviously, because we're going to modify it. So load the level sequence, static load object as usual, and then we're going to make sure that the level sequence is valid, so we don't add the shot track inside the level sequence that doesn't exist. And once we're sure that the level sequence is valid, we can finally add the track inside it. So in the level sequence, we're going to ask the movie scene to add a new track, so add track using the class of the shot track, so the U movie scene cinematic shot track, and that's just going to create a new track for us. We can use it to update our shot track variable, and then we're just going to say that it was a success, we were able to add a new track inside the level sequence and return it at the end right here. So good, now we know how to add a shot track inside the level sequence. It's super simple because there's only one shot track at a time in the level sequence, so super easy to add a new one, you just have to add the track just like that. Super simple. Now it's time to look at how to remove the shot track from the level sequence. So same thing as the previous function, we're gonna start by checking if the shot track is already inside the level sequence. So get shot track from level sequence, feeding it the level sequence path, and that's going to give you the shot track. If the shot track is already equal to null, you don't have to remove it from the level sequence because, well, it's not in there. So you can just return right away. But if the shot track is valid, then you're gonna have to remove it. So I'm just gonna load my level sequence and then I'm gonna ask my movie scene that is inside my level sequence to remove my track. The track that you want to remove is obviously the shot track that you have right here. So just remove the track just like that. You don't have to make sure that the level sequence is valid because, well, if the shot track is inside the level sequence, it means that the level sequence is valid. You can simply call the remove track and that's going to remove the track for you. And then you can say that it was a success. You were able to remove the track from the level sequence and that's it. Super simple. Now it's time to jump into the more complicated function, the link shot to shot track function. So we have the function right here. And the first step for that function is going to make sure that the shot we receive as input is actually valid. So here I'm just going to check if it's equal to null. If it's equal to null, well, I cannot link that shot to the track because, well, the shot is not valid. So you cannot link something that doesn't make sense to something else that that will just not make sense. So don't do that. So if the shot is not valid, I'm just going to return right away. And then same thing, we have to make sure that the track is also valid. So I'm going to get the shot track from the level sequence once again. So filling at the level sequence pad, that's going to return you the shot track. And we're going to make sure that it is valid also. So if the shot track is equal to null, I'm just going to return right away once again, because even if the shot is valid, we cannot add it to a track that is not valid. So we have to make sure that the shot and the shot track are valid. And now that we're sure that both of those are valid, we have to link them together. And before we do that, we have to actually calculate where we want to place the shot inside the shot track using the start frame and end frame. And I'm saying calculating because, well, the level sequence doesn't work in frames, it works in ticks, which means that we have to calculate ourselves manually how many ticks there is per frame. I already explained that in a few videos before, so if you want to have more information, you can go see them. But in short, in the level sequence, you can modify both the tick resolution and the display rate of the level sequence, and both those values are going to affect how many ticks there are per frame. And since that value is very it means that the frame numbers that we receive as input have different worth, different worth in ticks. And since all the operations that are done inside the level sequence are done in tick, you have to convert those frame numbers to ticks to be able to place the sections where you want in the level sequence. So here I'm calculating how many ticks there are per frame. And once I know that information, I can finally add my shot inside my shot track just like that. So in my shot track, I'm going to add a new sequence, which is going to be the shot that I receive as input. And then you have to specify where you want the shot to start in the level sequence. So I'm going to use my start frame and converting it in ticks using the ticks per frame value that I have right here. Multiplying the start frame by the ticks per frame, that's going to give you a frame number, which is the amount of tick where you want to place the shot in the level sequence. And then the second variable that you have to feed that function is the duration of your shot. So how many ticks you want your shot to last in the level sequence. In my case, since I have my end frame right here, I'm just going to calculate the duration in frame just like that, end frame minus start frame. That's going to give me a frame number that I can then multiply by the amount of ticks I have per frame and then all that together that's going to give me the amount of ticks corresponding to the duration of my shot. So then I'll be able to do an add sequence, adding my shot, and that's going to return me the section that was just created for my shot uh, section that I can then simply check to see if it's not equal to null, to know if it was a success or not. And if it was a success, well, that's good. But in any case, it's time to jump in Unreal to see if it works. So in Unreal, we're going to start with a completely empty level sequence that I have right here, but I also have three shots and those shots are not empty. So if I go in my shot one, we can see that my warrior is playing its idol animation. And then in the shot two, we can see that my warrior is playing its 
walk animation and finally in the shot tree we can see that we're scaling down the warrior a little bit so that way when adding those three shots inside the level sequence we're gonna see a difference if it works so we're gonna add these three shots inside the level sequence right here and we're gonna do that using a little user interface as usual we can provide it the path of the level sequence we want to modify which is the one I just showed you and then we have the start frame and end frame of our shot sections that are going to be linked inside the level sequence and then we have a few buttons to add the shot track inside the level sequence get the track or remove the track and then once the track is created we can link our shots to it so we can link the shot one shot two and shot three to the shot track that we just created so now if we go see in the graph we can see that the first three buttons are simply calling the first three functions that we have so the add shot track to level sequence get shot track from level sequence and remove shot track from level sequence and for all those function call I'm using the same level sequence path because I only have one I have my empty level sequence that I just showed you but for the last three buttons that we have I'm gonna start by setting the shot that I want to link to my level sequence so either my shot one shot two or shot three the three shot I just showed you and then we're gonna call the link shot to shot track function the path of the level sequence is going to be the same obviously but the shot is going to be the shot I just decided right here so we're gonna provide the shot that we want to set into the shot track and then we have the start frame and end frame of the shot section that is going to be created the perfect let's go see if it works now I'm gonna open my editor utility widget that I have right here I'm gonna scroll all the way down and here we go now I'm gonna start by creating a new track inside the level sequence because there's nothing in there here we go now I have a new shot track I can get my track if it's there and I can remove the track I cannot remove a track that doesn't exist obviously and I cannot add a second track if it's already there because there can only be one shot track per level sequence so I can get the track add the track remove the track as usual and then once the track is created inside the level sequence now we can link our shots and for example I can link my shot one between the frame 0 and frame 50 right here and by clicking on the link shot one button and we can see that it spawned the shot section inside my shot track and if I scrub inside that shot section we can see that my warrior is playing inside all animation because that's what I've set inside the shot one and then I can try to link my shot two let's say between frame 51 and 100 so shot two right here so between my shot one and shot two the warrior is going to switch between the walk animation and the idle animation here we go it seemed to work and finally we can link the last one so between the frame 101 and 150 we're gonna link the shot three here we go and now if I go into the shot three section we can see that the warrior is now scaling down the way we've set them inside the shot tree perfect so now you know how to add different shots inside your level sequence and that's going to conclude today's video so i'm gonna see you in the next one bye bye